Good afternoon, supercomputing nerds, and welcome back to Denver, Colorado. My name is Savannah Peterson, and we are here live for four days from Supercomputing 2023, joined by my fabulous co-host, John Furrier. John, how was your lunch? How's your uh, afternoon? Lunch was great, and again, the pace of the play here at this conference is very fast. It's got the AI theme, but it's also blending younger generations, and it's basically a systems, I would call it a systems architecture, hardware meets software, reconfiguration, it's still the same game. Hardware, middleware, apps, storage, <laughs> networking, <laughs> servers, yeah. uh, and all kind of coming together, kind of refactored, and it's going to be great guests here as we get in and some of the elements that are being used to kind of build the new AI environment. AI hardware is all the rage, and you know, Dell's been a leader in the moving fast, establishing a strong position. We love our friends at Dell, and without further ado, Bill Leslie, welcome to the show. Thanks so Thank much for being much. here with us. So you are on the HCI team, the Human Computer Interaction Team. This show <laughs> is kind of uh, the ultimate celebration of humans and computers interacting. That's right. What's it like for you to be here with our community? No, this is a blast. First time here with you guys live, so really uh, enjoy myself yeah. and, and really, you know, just being around the floor, seeing yeah. all of the universities yeah. that are out here. I've seen more GPUs than I've seen in my life. It's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> Likewise, I saw, <laughs> instead of got milk, I saw got GPUs right. as one of the t-shirts, and I yeah. thought, wow, we are really having a GPU party. You know, I, I love the clever HCI human computer interface, because the hyper-converged infrastructure we had in the last session really kind of ties in the personalization aspect. One of the things coming out of this show is that it's not just hardware show or supercomputer chip show, it's actually showing outcomes That's right. around the new model of LLMs Very and hyper so. and hyperconverged storage networking and servers coming together. That was you know a generation ago, maybe a generation and a half. Now it's like okay, it's in the play, but it actually has to deliver precision but yet deal with broad sets of data. And this is where I think the AI infrastructure piece leverages kind of the Absolutely. best practices of HCI, but it, the game is changing. It is. So give us your take on how you know, the hyper-converged market's changing. Yeah, so one of the things that we saw with VxRail when it was introduced about seven years ago is it was really about how do we offload some of the day-to-day -day tasks, the mundane things that, that take up our time, right? and how can we automate, orchestrate, do those things that are the regular reoccurring things so that IT teams can go out and actually create new ways of delivering their services. Little did we know we'd be where we're at today where now AI is really radically changing that game in many ways with some of the lang large language models mm -hmm. and things of that sort um, as well. I, I just want to, just for a second there, because I'm curious, you've been in the industry for a while, were you anticipating this type of jump with AI right now? Were you able to see this in your crystal ball or has it all kind of come upon us? I think us? about four years ago, we started to see more and more of the GPU introductions that were yeah. take on new workloads, right? I think we were seeing obviously VDI use case with GPUs forever. Yeah. And when we started to see, okay, we're going to start doing some things that might be some machine learning, some dabblings here and there on some workloads, we started thinking, okay, what else can we be doing to offload the next level yeah. with some of that? And right. one of the things we've been doing with VxRail along the way is building in capabilities where we're actually deploying those GPUs in the first run experience. Managing the day two experiences with the life cycle management. Those things that sound yeah. easy, but can be kind of hard yeah. if you're not focused on that all the time. Talk about the workload changes around the end to end, because one of the things, again, that's coming out of this, and this came up at KubeCon and the Linux Foundation around Kubernetes is as these clusters start to get deployed, you got to start thinking about storage and the interconnects around it. And then you got to look at overall throughput and workloads, you know, when are tokens being delivered, if you're talking about LLMs, um, got retrieval models. So you now have this view of, it's not just the shiny new toy, the GPU or right. the model, or the foundation model, it's an end-to-end -end workflow. VxRail and vSAN, all these kind of, I won't say old technologies, but the ones that were pre-AI, quote, infrastructure, have in place some of those things. They had workload, they thought about workloads end to end. AI though, is going to the same direction, so what's right. the new workload dynamic that AI is addressing, and how are you guys flexing your, your VxRail and the, and the technology? Yeah, one of the things, John, that we're seeing VMware push the envelope in is their new architecture with vSAN ESA, right? They moved to a single tier, they removed that cache drive, this did a few things to help improve not only performance, but also improve the cost profile of two the environment. Two key themes of the entire show. You don't often get the two for one type right, of a situation. Right. 
and what we were starting to see, even in the previous generation of vSAN OSA, their original storage architecture, was it was starting to top out some of these networks, 25 gig networks. Well, we wanted to really yeah. see what vSAN ESA could do, and we pushed the envelope with 100 gig networking which is small fry compared to some of the things that we're seeing here this week, <laughs> but it's that next jump in evolution of performance and speeds that are really needed for those next gen workloads. How do we have those pipelines for all of that data that's going to be massively flowing across the network with HCI and similar types of technologies? The network's huge, the network's huge. I asked a couple guys yesterday, who were on the, and gals on theCUBE yesterday, um, if you could optimize for one of two things, more compute, more GPUs, or more networking, most people right now are into the GPUs, but they want more networking. Yeah. They want faster networking, they want interconnects, because it's what's going on around the GPUs now and the CPUs is the big conversation here. It is, and actually one of the things that we've seen with our partner in Intel is their new AMX technology, the, the on-chip accelerators, mm -hmm. it's incredible for what it's doing for some of these AI workloads. Compared to the previous generation, you're getting like three X the type of performance for you know, the BERT type models that are out there or image classification models with ResNet yeah. 50. This is just a game changer with what you're getting included in the fourth gen scalable procs. It's making it a reality where all of this confluence of tech is coming together for these next gen workloads like AI. I mean, high performance networking should be a show in and so itself because there's a lot of networking going on. Maybe that'll be nice. On. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I was talking with um, some of the storage folks and the conversation is it's not about storage anymore because storage is everywhere. You got to store stuff. Right. It's about compute, accelerated uh, computing, accelerated networking. So it's a workload conversation, not so much a point solution because we're already penetrated with storage. Well, I think we sometimes overlook where the compute is going to as well. We've got a couple customers a that have hundreds, thousands of sites. Mm -hmm. So when you start dealing with 1,500, 10,000 nodes across all of these distributed locations with the compute, guess what? You got to do AI there. You got to be doing the visual queuing, yeah. the inferencing. What are customers doing in retail locations? It's not always about the biggest supercomputer you can get, it's about how you can get that compute right there at the edge. Yeah, and the and optimize customers that are. action that you need, yeah. that workload or that batch or whatever that is. Let's talk about it, you brought up customers there. Are you sensing, I feel like you can almost feel it in the room, there's a, there's a lot of FOMO going on. Are, is that a conversation that you're having with your customers? How are you helping them navigate this entry? If so one of the things that we're speed. starting to do, at least in the VX rail space is, see what you can get mm -hmm. with what's out of the box. You might be amazed by what you can get with just the AMX chips that are part of the fourth gen procs, and then you can decide how much you need to go with the GPUs, right? If that 3X improvement is good mm -hmm. enough for what their environment is, stick with it. Yeah. If you need more than that, go for it, right? A lot of our platforms yeah. support GPUs. You can be GPU ready if you need to. We see about 25% of our customers right now starting to use GPUs here and there in some of those nodes. So it's uh, it's going to be a big change for us going forward. That's a significant percentage. Yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised, and I bet it's going to be 100% or just about pretty soon. Right. So yeah. you have modern databases are out there. We got a multi-cloud we call super cloud emerging. You're starting to see, you know, uh, companies like NVIDIA enable like Core Weaver. Uh, that's interesting yeah, power dynamic. Um, you're going to start to see entrepreneurial activity come out. You guys see this end-to-end -end workflow. So I got to ask you, when you think about, think about the cloud relationship, we're seeing a lot of on-premise yep. action. We had a little debate with uh, Vulture, but he thinks there's more repatriation going on than our numbers say, but, but he's in the data center business, so you know, he's a cloud service provider, so I'm sure he says that, but I think the repatriation numbers don't show the true trend, which is, it's not about taking workloads off the cloud, it's the net new build out going on. That's and this right. is the hybrid on-premise edge conversation we've been having for over a year. Now with AI, that's just highlighted. Can you share your reaction yeah. to that? Do you agree? And if, if so, what other commentary can you add on top of it? Yeah, I think one of the things we've seen with VxRail, and we've been doing this with VMware Cloud Foundation on VxRail, is getting that most consistent operating model. What do you have in the cloud, on-prem? How do you drive consistency? And Dell has introduced a couple new offerings in our Apex Cloud platform so that we can now drive consistent cloud with Microsoft Azure with our ACP 
for Microsoft Azure offering. We've also been doing similar with Red Hat OpenShift, right? Um, and we're going to continue to push into those new forays because customers need the same experience. What they're getting public cloud, bring it back on ground. How do you make sure that you're delivering the same type of operating environment in both locations? Savannah, you know we've been talking a lot about Dell here. Obviously they're sponsoring the, the booth. We want to shout out to Dell Technologies for enabling us to do our show here. Uh, but you mentioned VMware, usually yeah. owned by Dell, but now they're, <laughs> they're going to be bought by Broadcom. Yeah. But, so that's going to close. But if you look at VMware, we had reporters in Barcelona uh, for their show. It was packed. And it's not because they have vSphere, that's their installed base. There's a ton of excitement around the AI enablement coming out. So how do you see um, VxRail, VMware, and with a faster Ethernet, obviously Broadcom's involved in that too, by the way. Right. So you, have, you kind of have a new configuration of players in that game yeah. to give the lift to the old school vSphere. And so AI helps legacy. Right? And so the excitement of VMware, I'm not sure it's because of vSphere, okay? vSphere's an install base, it's like an operating standard, but they're excited about what's going to happen beyond vSphere. I think what you're seeing in some of that excitement is it's on how easy VMware makes it to work with that existing stack of components and software, right? And then it's adding in the new workloads, whatever the AI inferencing models or visual models or large language learning type things. When you make it easy, like what they're doing with the VMware Private AI, yeah. right? That's just bringing, setting it right there on the stack that you're already familiar with, the yeah. VxRail's right a part of with the Cloud Foundation environments. It's mm -hmm. just start building and going. Yeah. Bring the, that new workload set into the environment. Raghu, the CEO, is very technical. Um, he took over the helm. Man, what a pivot they made, Savannah. They really added that on there. And they got people excited. We were involved in that with our yeah. Super Cloud project. But yeah, I think yeah. this, this points to architecture. Okay, and, and if you look at the enterprise now, we've had this same exact conversation in KubeCon. Yeah. Platform engineering is the hottest thing in the cloud native world. Basically that means it's the modern IT architecture. Right. What is that going to look like? Because you guys have a position with v, VxRail and a lot of instances, a lot of customers. You got the vSAN, you got the VMware view, you got the networking. Like 20,000 customers. What's the, what's the, What's the architectural conversation going on in the enterprise right now to make sure they don't miss the AI wave? Yeah, well and, and thank you for mentioning our 20,000 customers, they've been fantastic. An number. And, and inside the VMware ecosystem of HCI, Dell is about two thirds of that install base. So we are right there mm. in lockstep with what VMware is doing, has been doing with Tanzu, previously pivotal before that, and, and the Tanzu Ready architecture is actually still based off of VxRail, so the platform underneath that infrastructure layer is set so that customers just can just start using it. And, and you know, it's really quite wonderful to yeah. see how many customers are adopting Tanzu as well as other Kubernetes frameworks oh, yeah. with VxRail, yeah. whether it's EKS Anywhere with Amazon or some of the SUSE ones. It's really quite phenomenal what all we're doing there. And 20,000 customers is extremely impressive. I see here in my notes too, 277,000 nodes. This, we are not talking about small amounts here. That is very much at scale and I think it's super impressive. And to be able to get those people and those customers onboarded to achieve their goals that quickly, that ease of use conversation has been such a hot theme here. Everyone wants to get from zero to 60 as quickly as possible. You mentioned just before the cameras went live that you have a nine-year-old son, Andrew. Yes. And since we're talking about making things easier, I am very very curious, how do you explain supercomputing and what's going on with AI to Andrew? You know, it's fun having him in the room with me because I work from home. He's actually written out resumes before using the words that we use, <laughs> not knowing how they go together, but he actually strings yeah. it together pretty well yeah. because when you break it it's down amazing. to the simplicity of how these things work together, right, you've got to be able to use your brain, that's the yeah. compute in the system. You've got to know how to assemble the equation because he's starting to put together the math equations. Yeah. This is kind of what yeah. HCI is yeah. doing at that infrastructure layer with the software, yeah. and then it's a, okay, now how do we make you smarter? That's where some of the AI stuff yeah. comes into this, right? So when we make it very tangible for a young one, and we've got student groups that are around Lots. on the show floor today, um, it's really fun to see their eyes light up when those dots get connected on just how simple it can be. Yes, they're very complex things, but when we can make it simple for them, it, it's really just quite wonderful to see. You know, I like Savannah bringing up the human-computer interaction yeah. angle because, you know, the, <laughs> Couldn't help myself. The, the, that example is not only the younger generation, it's how they're going to work. So the interface of AI that we've all seen with ChatGPT checks the box there. All right. 
your son's never going to learn data structures, okay? He doesn't have to. Right. This stuff's going to be co-piloted for him, and he can then st he can stand up Kubernetes clusters with voice activation, potentially. Load that VX rail. That's what so, he's going to be doing so by 10. Programmable. <laughs> at this I mean, rate. <laughs> look, at, I was blown away when I saw 3D printing. Can oh, you imagine an IT yeah, environment too. where you just say, deploy VX rail across this environment and, and manage the data pipelines from XYZ data sets? That's coming. It, it'll be here before we know it with it, and one of the things that we've been doing with VxRail is expanding all the types of flexibility that we have with deployments, right? We have compute-only nodes that we call dynamic nodes, mm -hmm. so if you just need to add additional compute to an environment, you can go and load your dynamic nodes, right? They have a personality of sorts for what that first run experience needs to look like. Mm -hmm. We have satellite nodes for just a single node vSphere edge deployment, right? And in those scenarios, we just say, hey, this is what I'm going to be, Go now map yourself back in our implementation teams, our customers in some cases are installing these on their own. Um, it, it's really going to evolve as we can build more and more of that AI into it yeah. and, and yeah. into more of the Dell products as well. That's, that's why I was saying about the workflows earlier because you guys have done the work. And I've been following the work you guys have been doing at VxRail and now Apex Cloud. You guys have done the work because you had to do the workflow on, really have. on lay that out. Now you have scale and automation and AI coming around the yeah. corner. Well, those 277,000 nodes that we've got deployed, we've learned a lot from those customers. What are the typical imagine. things that they run into? What are the challenges? How do we automate that out so yeah. the next customer doesn't have to hit the same pain point that maybe one has already hit before? How do we improve the lifecycle management that we're constantly improving upon? We do something like 800,000 hours of test on every Ooh. single major release. There's not a lot of customers that can have 800, thousand people hours and lab time yeah. hours and yeah. equipment, that's the benefit of coming with these purpose-built systems yeah. like VxRail for VMware, like our Apex Cloud platforms for Microsoft Azure, and also yeah. Red Hat OpenShift. I mean, I think AI is going to be a, a friend to you guys because of the tailwind, because of the existing install base, because of the data, because of the ease, ease of ease, easing up on all that hard, hard, heavy lifting on configuration. If software continues to go down the coding route, I mean, Shopify's entire headless system is now ge generated by code, we heard that in the cube, yeah. by AI. The glue layers could be filled in by AI. So when you start to think about integrations, this is going to be exciting. It's a lot of fun. Some of, some of the things that we haven't even talked about yet is what you can do with the APIs that we're building in with these. Now you can actually codify the infrastructure, the management of that so infrastructure. Cool. Yeah. What happens when AI starts to be utilized in combination with that, now you don't even need to have a, necessarily a software developer. You can use AI to give you the first pass at what that API instruction set's going to be, okay. verify it, make sure it's not hallucinating, Mm -hmm. and then you can actually have now a faster implementation <laughs> of new infrastructure along the way, right? I'm laughing because you're basically giving a master class and we have our own AI now, so that's actually on the transcript. That'll be in the AI. And yeah. Savannah, you know <laughs> that my view is I'm pro-AI and I'm anti-AI <laughs> regulation. So that's my view on AI. <laughs> John likes to live train our AI while we're sitting here so, on set. So why don't we train some AI? What is VxRail's strategy for AI? Well, I think you're going to have to wait a little <laughs> bit more on that. Right now, it's making sure that our customers okay. can enable AI workloads in their environments using GPUs, making sure that they've got the right type of networking mm -hmm. readiness for that, so that whatever is thrown at them, they're going to be able to run it in their environment with VxRail. I like it, well okay, I guess we'll have to be patient, but I am going to ask you one final question, Bill. Because it's your first time and you've been such a stellar guest, we're certainly going to have you back on theCUBE. What do you hope, next time we get to sit down together, Ooh. that you can say then that you can't say now? Well, I'd, I'd like to say a lot more customers, that my son is actually doing some of the things you talked yeah. about. All right, I think Andrew. that would be a, a, a blast. But I, yeah. I really think that um, I, I'd like to see VxRail still in the forefront of the conversation, making life easy for the, our VMware friends and customers that are trying to deploy AI workloads on vSAN and vSphere. 
Well, that's absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your wonderful insights. I hope that Andrew is proud watching at home right now. <laughs> yeah. And John, thank you for the yeah. great questions as always. And yeah. thank all of you for tuning in to our wall-to-wall -wall live coverage four days here at Supercomputing 2023 in Denver, Colorado. My name's Savannah Peterson, and you're watching theCUBE, the leading source for emerging tech news.